carnage at the Allianz Arena as the goals rained down with Bayern Munich emerging as 4-3 winners against United. And the Bavarians also came out ahead on XG. But what tactics did we see from both Ten Hag and Thomas Tuchel? We'll find out beginning with Tuchel's Bayern on the ball. What was particularly interesting in this encounter was how Bayern Munich looked to generate advantages in different ways depending on which flank they attacked down, particularly before Tuchel changed things up in the second half. The focus on the flanks was facilitated by United being fairly disciplined in looking to protect the centre, both when pressing high and operating in the mid-block. This was through Rasmus Hoyland leading the press and Eriksen pushing up alongside Fernandes to go pivot to pivot against Goretzka and Kimmich, while Casemiro could look after Muziala, who was drifting between the lines. And we'll focus on the left-hand side first, which is where United often try to lead Bayern, through Hoyland looking to press Kim Min Jae from in to out, discouraging the central play back to Upamecano. While Rashford could back this up, looking to drift in off the flank to Upamecano, making the pass even harder. When this occurred, there was more of a man-to-man -man situation down the left, meaning when Bayern's men received, a United player would be in hot pursuit, making it much tougher to play down the side of the pitch initially, often forcing play backwards, as United were more successful in defending this flank. There were occasions where Bayern escaped the man-to-man -man nature of the left-hand side, primarily when Hoyland was slow to press, meaning Kim Min Jae could drive up the pitch to now draw midfielders out of position as they now had a one-man advantage. But for the most part, because it was man-to-man -man down the left, Bayern were depending on the qualitative advantage, i.e. being better in one versus one situations, whether it was Davis versus Palistri. Nabri vs Dallo or Muziala vs Casemiro, as Muziala tended to occupy the left half space. And there were occasions we saw Bayern win the 1v1s, but the best example comes in the second goal. Kim receives but doesn't drive and instead passes meaning that United look to have it under control. Muziala receives and gets past Casemiro and because there were so many man-to-man -man situations down this flank, Dallo is instantly 2 vs 1 down. This culminates in him cutting back to Nabri in acres of space, as the United midfield evidently had better things to do than track back aggressively. If Bayern's left side attack was all about the qualitative, the right hand side was about the quantitative advantage. This was often caused by the fact United took up somewhat aggressive positions in the press, although the actual press was not intense. In other words, Rashford would often be in this central position to press a centre back, but the keeper often had zero pressure on him, meaning the chipped ball into Lima was always on. Or, at times, even when a centre-back was on the ball and Rashford was higher on the centre-back, the pressure was still non-existent, allowing the pass to Lima. In certain situations, even if he was deeper looking like he was covering Lima, he wasn't sure to cut out the passing angles to him, and either way, all this meant that Lima was often able to easily get on the ball on the wrong side of Rashford, meaning Lima and Sane now had a 2 vs 1 situation against Region. And Bayern were able to exploit both the pace of Sane and the creativity of Kane. So in these scenarios, with the covering Casemiro often dragged wide left by Muziala, Kane would drop into this region, usually dragging the hyper-aggressive Martinez with him and creating a massive gap in the defence. Sane rarely remained wide and made the aggressive central run looking to get on the end of a pass. This may not have directly led to a goal for Bayern, but many menacing scenarios were created. As the game progressed, Martinez became more and more wary of Sane's runs and he was no longer as aggressive in closing down Kane and this served to now make a more genuine midfield overload, having Kane as a new outlet option. Using Conrad Lima, a natural midfielder at right back, also gave Bayern the option high in control possession to have Lima, rather than overlap like a traditional fullback, invert into these attacking zones to allow Sane to be out wide and look to create isolations either against Region or Rashford to then cut infield. 
Speaking of Rashford, we did at times see him have the scope to remain higher when Bayern were attacking, and this would mean on the transition United would look to hit him. However, Upamecano is plenty quick, and with the head start he was able to handle most of these situations. United had just 40% possession, but we'll just briefly touch on them. Once again we saw the importance of Onana, at least in the short build-up play. Bayern were often defending in a shape that flexed between a genuine 4-4-2 and a 4-3-1-2, with Goreska pushing behind Muziala and Kane. When Onana was not involved in the build-up play, it would be Casemiro or Eriksen who dropped deep to make the 3 versus 2 and this would mean that Goreska and Kimmich could be man-to-man -man with the remaining midfielders. But when Onana pushed high, allowing Casemiro to stay higher, United now maintained the 3 versus 2 in the midfield, and could now find a free man, then move through that midfield. And in fact, Bayern were aware of this midfield problem, so Sane often began deeper in a tucked-in position, ready to cover centrally in the midfield, or spring wide. However, what was really interesting was how Ten Hag looked to get the best out of Rashford. Initially, he used Region very much as a traditional fullback, looking to overlap, and Rashford found himself in field. And often because of Sane's tucked in position, higher up the pitch, there was potential for two versus ones against Lima, which often happened, with Rashford finding Region running in behind. But late in the match, Ten Hag looked to take advantage of Rashford's 1v1 ability, meaning it was Region who tended to now invert creating the scope for even more Rashford versus Lima 1v1s, where Rashford for the most part would easily get past him and get dangerous crosses in. But United often presented a lot of the same tactical problems we talked about in this deep dive video that is linked in the comments below. Overall, this was a match where neither side were at their best, and although until the opener United looked competitive, for most of the match Bayern Munich were comfortable despite the close scoreline. There is still a lot of room for improvement for the Bavarians however, as United themselves conceded some unlucky goals. For the manager tactical scores, Tuchel's setup did not have to be groundbreaking to get the win, instead just having to be well executed, earning him a 6. United weren't terrible by any extent, but there was still clear daylight between the two sides, giving Ten Hag a 5. But what did you make of the match? Drop it down below. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash footballmadesimple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content.